Hello there, welcome back for another Brutus Monroe video. I am over on the Brutus Monroe blog today with this card, so let's talk about what we are using. I'm using the Love You Floral stamp set and it is absolutely stunning. I love it and has some amazing sentiments that go with it. And uh, you can't go wrong with florals, right? And then I'm also gonna be using the Extra Sentimental stamp set using the Thinking of You. We're gonna use some aqua pigments as well in the colors fuchsia, blue, green, orange, and yellow. And I thought I was gonna use my Misty, but I decided this would just be easier. So all y'all that don't have a Misty, don't worry, this can be done. I am inking up just part of the stamp and I've left it right on the packaging. And I'm inking up just part of it because I just want the top part of the stamp. I'm inking that up with the embossing ink. And I forgot to put some magic powder bag all over that because I don't, I'm going to emboss this with some alabaster embossing powder and I don't want that to get everywhere. So again, inking that up, setting down my aqua pigment paper, and then I'm just rubbing that where I want the image to be. You're not going to be able to really tell here. You might be able to tell once I get some embossing powder on it, but I did, that magic powder bag did a pretty good job of not getting too much excess powder anywhere and the image stamped perfectly. So that worked out great. So I'm gonna heat this with my heat tool and you will be able to tell that it is melting because it will turn shiny. It goes from a matte to a shiny. And I love this alabaster embossing powder because it's just such a good fine detail embossing powder. Um, and it, oh, it's so pretty. I know you really can't tell here on the white, but you will be able to tell when we get to painting. But for now, that's what we're doing. So I am gonna ink up another panel. I don't show you the painting of this panel, but I'm just showing you in case you missed what I did. Ink that up. And I had already used the embossing bag on it. And then you just rub, rub, rub on the back side, pick it up, and then you can cover it with your embossing powder. And I'm even using the textured side. So it did a very good job of stamping. Now this, I did get a lot of excess powder at the bottom simply because my stamp when I cleaned it off was still a little bit wet but not a big deal, you just take a paintbrush and you can wipe that away. And then once again, we heat that with our heat tool until that is smooth and melted. And then we will move on to painting. So I've got my Waffle Flower Media Mat. Love this for my aqua pigments because you can just put them in each of the little wells and you don't have to worry about it um, contaminating into the others. Um, and then so I've got the fuchsia, I put down the blue green and then we have the orange and now I'm putting down some yellow. And a little bit actually goes a long way I do end up putting some green in that blue because it was a little too blue for me. Um, so, and then I have my little painting buddy with me. I am using a half inch flat brush to put down, well, supposedly clean water, clearly it's not. <laughs> but that's my suggestion, use clean water. Uh, I don't mind because I'm a messy painter anyway. And the point of this is I am just slapping down some color and letting it kind of do its thing. Typically, if you know you emboss, you can put down color carefully and you won't have to worry about you know, colors contaminating each other, but because I am sloppily putting it down uh, and I want it to go outside the lines, I am not concerned. And let me just tell you, my little buddy sitting on my lap was purring the entire time. I really do think that he is a craft cat. This is Max. For those of you who don't know, or you know, you know I have two cats, this one is Max. And Max loves it. And I'll tell you, as soon as I stopped painting, he kind of stopped purring. But he watches everything I do. I'm telling you, there is something magical about art, folks. So it is relaxing for all of us, even the animals. <laughs> and Miles would be up here probably, except um, Miles is probably off destroying something. So <laughs> he will poke his nose in later. I'm going to heat that because I want that first layer to dry. And um, I'm kind of smacking it down, getting some of the paint to, to splatter out just a little bit. I love that messy look. Uh, if it's not for you, you can definitely, you know, skip that. Uh, but now I'm going to come in and intensify some of those colors just where I think some shadowing might be. You wouldn't have to do this either. You could leave it the way that it is. It's really pretty even as a flat color. Uh, but I wanted to bring in a lot more extra color. And it's so easy to do. All I'm using is a number four um, round brush. These are my black, silver black velvet. And uh, just bringing in some more of that color just to intensify some of those areas. <laughs> Max is trying to help. And I really don't mind because he just, uh, he loves it. It's fun. 
So part of the reason that I really enjoy using the aqua pigments for painting is that they're really easy to mix with each other, obviously. And also the color is pretty intense. They're a very vibrant color. And um, I typically like that. I mean, if you wanted it softer, just bring in a lot more water. But sometimes I struggle when I'm using pan paints and this is a great way to just practice with your painting, which is, you know, super fun. Who doesn't want to practice painting? Um, but yeah, I'm going to keep looking at this and seeing where I want to intensify those colors. And then um, when I'm happy with that, I will eventually stop. But I keep intensifying for a little bit. All right, now that I'm happy with that panel, I'm it's completely dry. I'm going to bring that over to my Tim Holtz guillotine trimmer, which I love. Um, I feel like I just get such a better cut line with this. I want the bigger one uh, because then I can cut bigger paper, of course. But um, yeah, I love this. So I'm just trimming this down. I want this to end up being about four inches by five and a quarter. So when I put it on the front of an A2 size card, it's actually going to uh, have a little bit of a border around it, which is nice. That's what I'm going for here. So I'm trimming that down and then I'm going to get ready to stamp my sentiment. So I do, I will put this into my mini Misty. I've grabbed that thinking of you from the extra sentimental stamp set using my magic powder bag. And then I'm going to ink this up with that embossing ink and then stamp it down. And then I'm going to cover this with some Brutus Monroe gilded embossing powder, which is their gold embossing powder. And it's beautiful, ultra fine, great for sentiments. I do end up getting some residual. Apparently I didn't dry it off enough, but again, easy fix. Just use your paintbrush and you can wipe away the excess. So then I'll heat that till that is smooth and melted. Once again, it'll become shiny. And then we're going to move on to our next step, which is stamping the inside of our card base. So I want to bring in that floral again, leaving it right on the packaging. And then I'm going to take my Rouge card stock by Brutus Monroe and I'm going to stamp just the one in the one corner which is awesome. Doing it with that embossing ink gives it this really pretty, you know, watermark effect because that's the cool thing about embossing ink is it's also a watermark ink and it looks really great on dark card stocks like this. And so, um, yeah, I'm so happy. And then I did it in the other corner. So it turns out really cool. And then I'm going to bring in my score pal so that I can score my card stock to actually make the card. And I scored it on this side and I realized, dang it, I probably should have scored it on the other side. So I flip it over, score it on the other side. So this way I can fold it over and this will be the A2 size card. So I had cut it down to five and a half inches by eight and a half inches and scored it at four and a quarter. And now we're going to do some splatter. I was looking at this and I was thinking, I really want to bring in some more gold elements. So I'm going to pull in my makeshift splatter box along with some gilded aqua pigment. And uh, yeah, it matches the gold beautifully. And then I will flick that all over my background. I was not shy flicking away. And then I am going to have to heat this with my heat tool if I want to put this down on top of my card base because obviously this is a wet medium. So I'll bring in my heat tool and kind of intensify that. But you can see I put a lot of splatter on there. And once that's dry, I'm going to grab some Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive and just put this down this way. This is a pretty warped panel. Um, I suppose foam tape would have worked out really nicely for this too, since this is a very flat card. It might have been nice. But here we are all finished. So there's our front, there's our inside. I love how this turned out. So as I said, I'm over on the Brutus Monroe blog, so if you'd like to go over and check that out, I'll have that linked down below. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I will see you very soon in the next video. Bye everybody.